Jessica got pregnant uh, the first time on our road trip to Massachusetts. We were on our way home. We stopped off in Virginia and she ended up catching poison ivy. So, you know, just being funny, I was like, uh, you know, what if you got pregnant out of this? We could call her Virginia Ivy. Um, but what, what we ended up deciding on was Madison Ivy. Um, the Ivy went real well with Madison. We thought it would make a cute story to tell her when she got older. Um, so, Madison was due in September. Um. <clears throat> we, uh, I told my, I told my best friend, we found him at, uh, we found him at the, uh, the hotel that he was working at at the time, and he says, uh, you know, he takes a look at us, and Jessica's got a big smile on her face, he says, look at you guys, you know, you look like the cat that got the cream, what's going on? So I hand him a little test strip. Uh, that told us that she was pregnant. He stares at it for a minute, this confused look on his face. And he looks up at us, and he looks back down at it, and his eyes fly open, and his jaw drops. He's oh, oh, oh! So he was real excited. And we called her mother, and Jessica told her what was going on. So, of course, she wants to talk to me. She gets me on the phone. She says, hi, Daddy. Are you going to marry my daughter? Uh, yeah, let's, let's not talk about that right now. We got enough on our place to deal with. Um, so, we're having a baby. Uh, we start making plans. Um, you know, she quits smoking, and she's taking her prenatal vitamins, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fixing all kinds of great stuff for, you know, dinner and, and breakfast, and feeding her good, but... Uh, I found us a, a nice two-bedroom, two-bath place on the other side of town to move us into to have our baby. The the day we we started moving in on this place on May 14th, um, and just a, a couple hours into the move, Jessica comes up to me. She says, uh, "I'm bleeding." Well, what the heck does that mean? bleeding well you know from there well how much well, just a few drops well what do you think I should do well you know it, it doesn't seem sound like it's that big a deal it's just a few drops of blood I don't know so we let it go for a few hours and early in the afternoon she come, uh, she comes out of the bathroom with the washcloth soaked in blood like oh hell no we're going to the hospital now so we go to the hospital and and uh, they take her up to L and D and start do, you know monitoring her. And they've got uh, one of those contraction meter things on her on her stomach and I guess they had it in the wrong place or something. And Jessica's like, well, you know, what's going on? Well, you're not having contractions. Uh, you know, we're, we need to do some some more tests. And Jessica says, well, I feel like I am. So she moves the contraction monitor to a place, you know, further up on her stomach, and all of a sudden these these alarms started going off all over the place, and people start rushing around. But uh, eventually somebody said something to me that made it dawn on me. Wait a minute, are are you saying we're having a baby today? Well, yes, sir. But she's only like 21 weeks along, and it, it's too soon. We we're, we can't have a baby today. Well, sir, she's fully dilated, and and there's nothing we can do about it. Well, what exactly does that mean? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Um, Jessica spent the rest of that day in L and D. They uh, they finally broke her water, um, and they told her that she likely had an infection in her uterus uh, that may have triggered the early delivery. 
Um, they told her she might have had an incompetent cervix. Um, they weren't they weren't real clear about why it was happening, but it, it was definitely happening, and and there was nothing that anybody could do about it. Um, unfortunately, uh, children at 21 weeks of development aren't old enough to survive on their own. So, um, about 1.30 in the morning, I, Jessica's been in labor for hours at this point, and she's screaming, and she's crying, and she's in pain. And they gave her some, they gave her some painkillers that really didn't help ease the pain very much. It just made her dopey. Um, but uh, so about 1:30 in the morning, she 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 gives birth to our our baby daughter Madison. Um, she came out purple. Probably from lack of oxygen or something. I asked the doctor when I saw her. I said, "Is, is she even alive?" He says, "Yes, she's um, she's got a heartbeat, but she doesn't have any brain waves. I don't know. I don't know how they know that sort of thing, but they they gave her credit for uh, about two minutes of life. But my whole purpose in making this video on her second birthday." is uh, to credit that brave little girl with choosing us for parents to to bring us together as a family because while Jessica was laying there in pain and suffering and crying uh, I could have seen it as an opportunity to cut out you know I I never wanted children I, I didn't want to be a father I, I didn't ever wanted to raise a family <clears throat> but while while I'm watching all this going on instead of seeing it as my opportunity to to say okay well you know this obviously wasn't supposed to happen and and you know, this is the end of it uh, the very opposite happened um, it instilled in me uh, a, a strong willingness and desire to raise a family and to be a father. That had never happened to me before. So on our first daughter, Madison's second birthday, um, I want to say happy birthday, little girl. Your mother and I miss you. We love, we love you very much. And thank you. Thank you for showing enough love to us to come into our lives for ever so brief a period of time and give us the gift of a family. We love you, Madison. Happy birthday. <laughs>